Spotlight. This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on India AI mission, strengthening country's AI ecosystem. The participants are Dr. Pavan Duggal, AI expert, and Diksha Saxena, Akashwani correspondent. India AI Summit is scheduled to be held on 19th and 20th February 2026. The India AI mission, which was launched by the government in 2024, aims to develop an inclusive AI ecosystem in the country. The government of India also emphasizes on the concept of AI for all. The government aims to ensure that AI benefits all the sectors of the society, driving innovation and growth. So first, let's listen to Prime Minister and his vision on AI. AI is writing the code for humanity in this century, but it is very different from other technology milestones in human history. AI is developing at an unprecedented scale and speed. To speak more on India AI Summit and the AI ecosystem in the country, we are now joined by Mr. Pawan Dugal, AI expert. Mr. Dugal, welcome to Akashwani News. Thank you, ma'am. It's a pleasure to be with you on your show. So, Mr. Dukul, can you explain this to us? What exactly India AI Summit is and how is it taking shape in the country? India AI Action Summit is going to take place on 19th and 20th of February 2026 at Bharat Mandapam in New Delhi. This is not just any other normal event. It is a very normative event which is going to potentially set the tone for global discussions on different aspects pertaining to adaptation and pertaining to regulation of AI as a technology. Now, this is the first of its event that's happening in India. Earlier seen uh, AI action summits taking place in different other jurisdictions, whether it was the UK, whether it was uh, France or whether it was South Korea. But this particular India AI summit assumes massive significance as it's for the first time, it's going to be hosted by one of the most prominent voices of the global South nations. And given the unique perspective and vision of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who sees artificial intelligence as a catalyst for not just economic growth, but also for national progress and prosperity, that this particular event assumes more significance. Given the government and the Prime Minister's vision of deploying technology for public good with a particular focus on real-world challenges in healthcare, education, agriculture, climate and governance, I believe this particular India AI Summit is going to break new ground, is going to come up with outcomes which could tomorrow becoming bunch-marking standards for the world. So all said and done, it's going to help propel India to further consolidate its thought leadership position in the context of AI and its regulation. Mr. Dugal, you very rightly pointed out that this is happening in India for the first time. So here I would like to draw your attention to one very important fact that the government stresses at making AI inclusive for development, sustainability and fostering equitable progress. What substantial steps have been taken in this direction? Well, the Indian government believes in demonstrating its vision through concrete actions. In this regard, uh, India has set up the India AI mission, which is only dedicated to promoting the cause of adoption of AI as a technology. It has been steadily trying to create an AI infrastructure so that the AI ecosystem in Indian context can boom, is also giving massive support to different organizations who have now been deployed for the purposes of developing Indian sovereign AI models or large language models. India has very quickly understood that if it wants to protect and preserve its national interest and national security, as also national sovereignty, it's absolutely essential that India must come up with its own sovereign large language models. In this regard, work has already started and uh, clearly a lot of other companies and consortiums have been brought uh, within the fold of the Indian AI mission. The main focus primarily is we want to give an impetus to Indian-led innovation. At the same time, we are very clear as a nation that uh, the India AI Summit Philosophical Foundation is going to be built on three guiding sutras, being people, planet, and progress. India is very clear 
that AI must benefit humanity in its full diversity, ensuring dignity, accessibility, and the inclusion of marginalized groups. On the Sutra of Planet, India's vision is that AI's development should be resource efficient, environmentally conscious, and must contribute to UN sustainability goals. On the Progress Sutra, India is clear that the benefits of AI should be distributed equally, democratizing access to data, compute, models, and enabling sectoral advancement in areas like governance, healthcare, and agriculture. You very rightly mentioned about these sutras. So before we progress with the program, let's listen to uh, the Minister of Electronics and Information and Technology, Ashwini Vaishnav, when uh, he was speaking about how India's approach is uh, towards a diverse AI. AI data lab are located in very diverse locations, not really the typical Bangalore, Pune kind of locations, but in very, very diverse locations. That's by design. That's not something which is accidental. That shows our approach at inclusivity, at inclusive growth. So, Mr. Dugal, as we spoke about the inclusivity which the government is focusing on when it comes to AI, and we also heard the Minister of Electronics and IT speaking on how diverse AI is in the country and the focus is on inclusivity. I would now like to draw your attention to one very important factor which was unveiled yesterday. Could you enlighten our listeners with the foundational model projects which were unveiled yesterday? Well, India has very quickly realized that the protection and preservation of its national sovereignty, security and integrity is intrinsically linked with the urgent, immediate need for coming up with a sovereign AI large language models. Till now, we have only been dependent on or using large language models or algorithms which are developed in the Western countries or in China. And most of these models are very clear. They are targeting the Indian market. They want to capture as much Indian data as possible and give it back to its jurisdictions where they are located. So ultimately, India is becoming more porous. In order to protect and preserve the Indian sovereignty, the Indian government has decided that we will be developing our own large language model. In this regard, various large language models have been sought to be developed. And for that, uh, the Indian AI mission has been very successful in roping in large number of relevant uh, stakeholders who are working in this space. And the focus is very clear that uh, these large language models will be resident in India, will be available for Indians to give an Indian perspective, but more significantly will help substantially strengthen the Indian cyber sovereignty, the Indian security and integrity, and also ultimately contribute in strengthening of Indian position as a global thought leader, as far as sovereign LLMs are concerned, and further propagating the concept which I've enunciated lately called uh, cognitive sovereignty or algorithmic sovereignty. Once you're going to have your own sovereign large language models, you will go ahead and consolidate India's cognitive sovereignty or algorithmic sovereignty, where India will have the complete control to decide what kind of AI models does it want to develop and how does it want to ensure that the data of Indians used by AI models is kept within the territorial boundaries of the country. Today, I believe that with the increasing uh, inroads being made in our lives by artificial intelligence, nations have to quickly start working in the direction of promoting and uh, securing their cognitive sovereignty and algorithmic sovereignty. And India, by going ahead and developing its language models, which are large and which are sovereign in nature, will contribute in the direction of protection and preservation of Indian cognitive sovereignty. Mr. Dukul, you very uh, you gave a very lucid explanation. And here I would like to draw your attention to one very important factor. You uh, mentioned about sovereignty and security of the country. So uh, what role is AI playing when it comes to the changing face of warfare across the globe? AI has completely changed uh, the entire nature of warfare in today's world. In fact, now it's very clear that the wars would now be fought by artificial intelligence rather than by humans. So not only we're looking at autonomous legal weapon systems, but more significantly, we now see more adoption of drone warfare powered by artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence will be able to pick out all the relevant data in the public domain and will be able to potentially even project the potential moves of your adversary. So AI will be changing the face 
the context of modern day warfare in almost all parameters and at all levels. And therefore, we need to develop our own approaches on how we can go ahead and use AI in warfare. Intrinsically, I'm very clear that uh, nations like India must have their own uh, autonomous AI warfare strategies and doctrines, where we must say that, look, when we are using AI or warfare, we are using it as part of our sovereign function, and we are using it for the purposes of protecting the Indian sovereignty, so that no foreign interference of any kind whatsoever can actually be tolerated. This will further help to strengthen the position of uh, the Indian doctrine, and also will consolidate India's position as a thought leader of coming up with transparent yet sovereign methodologies of using AI in the context of warfare. But yes, one thing is sure, the world has changed completely. The recent Russia-Ukraine war has shown how drones are more powerful than tanks. And now I believe AI will potentially be the most important vector in the coming times for all kinds of warfare at whatever level, whether it's land, sea, water, or even outer space. There's one very important factor that India is regarded as the skills capital in technology and artificial intelligence. And the most reliable ranking in AI is placing India amongst the top countries with AI skills, AI capabilities and policies to use AI. What steps are being taken apart from organizing summits and ensuring that the AI is accessible to all? What steps are being taken to improve the ranking of India in the AI sector? And do you see India leading the world when it comes to AI? I have no doubts in my mind of any kind whatsoever that India will be a global thought leader, a global leader in artificial intelligence in the next few decades. Why? Because of our unique position. Number one, India is not just the largest democracy in the world. India is also the most populous nation in the world. So by these two elements and the gravitas that India brings on to the global AI table is remarkable. No other country can boast of these kinds of credentials. On top of it, we have an extremely futuristic vision of India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who has at a very early stage identified AI as an important catalyst for economic growth. And the way he's gone ahead, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and espoused a new concept of sustainable AI at the AI Action Summit in Paris in February 2025. Only goes to show how innovative his thought process is when it comes to innovating on newly emerging technologies like AI. In fact, Prime Minister Modi has said it's time to come up with sustainable AI, wherein he has actually married the concept of sustainability with artificial intelligence, opening up a completely new chapter of growth for nations, including that of India. Number three, Indians have got very sharp minds. And because of our sharp minds, our ability to be resilient is very high. It's in that regard that uh, the kind of adoption that we are seeing in India is only second to the U.S. at a global level. So given the unique DNA of the Indian mindsets, I believe India is going to be riding the thought leadership and the leadership both on AI. And finally, I think uh, more usage of and more reliance on AI by Indians in their day-to-day -day activities effectively means that India is at a very important cusp in terms of its preeminent position in AI and in AI regulation. And ultimately, it will be the people who will be making the Indian government, the Indian nation as global leaders. What we will do as people, as society, as communities will to a large extent become a benchmarking standard for the world at large. So I'm no doubt of any kind whatsoever that AI may have generated in the West but the future of AI is in the hands of India. India is going to be one of the most predominant voices globally on how the entire debate pertaining to proliferation, regulation of AI needs to be going forward. And finally, given the Indian representation of the global South group of nations, India actually represents itself as a massive ambassador of the not just the culture, the mindset, but also the thought process of global South nations. So in all these parameters, uh, there's no other nation that actually uh, comes up to the level of credentials that India has and its potentiality to become a global thought leader on AI. Thank you so much, Mr. Dugal, for sparing your valuable time and joining us for Spotlight tonight. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking. You were listening to a discussion on India AI mission, strengthening countries' AI ecosystem. The participants were Dr. Pavan Duggal, AI expert, and Diksha Saxena, Akashwani correspondent. Spotlight.